right. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic day. It's a beautiful day here. Not too hot. I finally think that the heat is gone. Thank goodness. It's crazy, although we could use some rain. We still haven't gotten any rain, and my garden is looking pitiful. Sad to say. So last time we did a, a acrylic painting, we did this farm girl in a hay field, I guess. <laughs> These brown bales of hay. And there is a, a traceable for this also on my um, Patreon and YouTube membership. And if you're just wanting the traceables of these, it's only $2.99, $2.99 a month. And you, you're able to download all of the traceables for the last two years. So it's a great deal if you're thinking of um, painting along with me. And if you want a little bit more instruction, then I do have uh, paintings that I do just for the members also. And you're welcome to join those. And it is $7 a month, I believe. And then the third level, ooh, that didn't like that. Third level is um, journaling and um, acrylic painting. And it, each level you go up, you get the levels below you also. So just keep that in mind. And the third level, I give um, happy mail every month of a print of one of my paintings and whatever else I can um, think of. Different napkins, tissues. Sometimes I give mono prints for my plant printing, that type of thing. So I thought today we were... We would do, oh, where did I put it? Oh, there it is. We would do um, this. So it's um, a combination of a couple, two or three different, um, I think they were, um, oh, what do you call them? Kind of like a poster form, plants and art. Um, they have like funny comments on them. Um, here's one. Uh, plants make me happy. Humans make my head hurt. <laughs> I thought that was so cool. So what I've done is I've taken bits and pieces of the background, but I used a different figure. And you can either put this on here also, by, I might do that with stickers, we'll see, and um, or do it with paint or marker, or whatever. So I put uh, an artist with a paintbrush in her hand, and and she's painting on an easel in the garden. So that is the downloadable for you. Uh, it doesn't have this, though. Um, I actually took that out. Decided to leave it out in case you didn't want it. Um, I'm just going to put this up here in front of me so we can wipe it a little bit. Um, what else? Here's, well, there's, there's what you'll get um, on the downloadable. And let's see. So what we're going to do first is we're going to put in our background and then we'll put her on top. Now you can either draw this all in and paint around her or you can do the whole background scenery first and you don't have to stick with this. You could add more trees, more flowers, whatever you want. You could put her, maybe you don't want her holding a, a plant. Maybe you want her holding a palette. You could do that too. So change them up if you want. And let's see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the 
background first. And I'm going to do it on this piece of file folder. This is my um, concertina um, painting file folder, I guess you could say. And I'm going to put some gesso on first because that helps my paint move better instead of just adhering where it is and not being able to move. So any gesso will do. Um, if you're doing on a piece of... Actually, I'm going to do it on this side here. So if you're going to be doing it on a piece of... Uh, like scrapbook paper maybe you have that you want to use, then um, you could put clear gesso on. Hey, Lisa, good to see you. I'm going to get a paper towel. Um, this is what we're doing today, Lisa. And there is a traceable for um, all levels in the memberships. If you're interested, uh, I haven't put it up in Patreon yet, but I will do that as soon as I'm done here. I just got carried away in the garden and trying to water stuff, keep it alive. So I was running behind. So I just like to put uh, just a one coat is fine for me because um, I'm not filling any um, texture on this page because it's smooth. But if you were doing a canvas, you would probably want to put two or three coats on just to fill the um, canvas texture. It's a little easier painting when you do that. Okay, so then we will hit this with the heat gun and dry it up. So I'll be, um, if you're not new to my channel, I like to paint in file folders because it's a strong paper and you can pretty well put anything on it because it's, it won't soak through and it won't buckle. And it's a great way to practice doing your fillets or mixed media paintings. I know a lot of people kind of shy away from doing uh, mixed media on a canvas because, well, let's face it, canvases are expensive and you don't want to end up doing something if you're not sure it's going to turn out. So this is a good way of practicing because it's just a piece of file folder. And you can use up old file folders. You could even use... Um, uh, cardboard if you wanted to practice on first. It's always a good idea to practice first before you attempt uh, painting on a canvas. All right, so like I said, I was going to do my background first. So I have a palette here, and I just use old coffee lids or uh, another good one, if you don't like the black, are the um, take out the clear ones that you can get from Chinese food or whatever. Um, the clear tops that fit over top, they're great. And uh, then you can just peel off the paint. 
So, um, it's going to be a lot of green, yellows, maybe a little bit of um, browns, that type of thing. Hey, Kim. This is what we're doing. <laughs> Plants and art. <laughs> make me happy. Humans make my head hurt. <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. Um, so I have craft paint. I like using craft paint. It's um, inexpensive. It's easy to use and it doesn't stick because it's a matte um, paint when dry. And this is some um, antique gold or ochre woodwork. And let's see what else we want to do here. Um, Maybe a bit of a darker green. Evergreen, maybe. Some white would be good. A bit of yellow, like bright yellow. Uh, maybe some of this. This is uh, sand color. And you could change it up for whatever... Um, time of the year you want it to be in. I'm going to get some purple. And let's see. This primary blue. Stoxy purple. A little bit of dark purple. And some black. I have charcoal here. That should do. It's dark. Okay, and some white. And you can also use gesso for your white if you want to. So I'm just, I've just got this out, so I'm going to just use this. All right. And I'm going to get another palette that I can just mix on. All right, so um, I like using all different types of brushes, flats, rounds. Um, also, these are great. They're a little fluffy. They're great for foliage, or you can use sponges for the foliage is another good one. Uh, small rounds for uh, if you want to get more precise looking. Uh, leaves are great. Different widths will give you a different leaf. Um, so let's put on a bit of a sky. And I, oh yeah, I was going to get some yellow yellow. Let's see. Uh, Yellow light. This is almost empty. I may as well use it up. My two faves. Yep. Me too. Can't go wrong. That should do it. I'm just going to put this upside down over here. And I'll start off with a, a flat brush. This is half inch. And we're going to add, um, I think I'm just going to do the sand color. a little bit white with it and maybe it's just a tad purple to dull it down and probably just mix it up so I'm just gonna this is the base um, layer so don't get too worried about 
brush strokes, that type of thing. Maybe even a blue. Let's see. Let's put a little, just a smidgen of blue. Just for the sky, just in case. You want to put a little bit of sky in there. Okay. You never know. This is just the underpainting. We will change it um, as we go. So it doesn't have to be um, a nice smooth gradiate, gradation, gradation of uh, color because there's going to be a whole lot of uh, trees and leaves and all kinds of stuff on there. Okay. So I'm going to take this one. This one is uh, one of the plaid, uh, Donna Downey scruff plaid, one stroke. And I think, I think I have both of them. Let's see. There is a smaller one also. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a smaller one. I don't see it here. Could, could be upstairs. And you can also use a deer foot. Like this. That'll do the same thing also. So let's try this. And all you do is... Um, I'm going to take some of this yellow and a little bit of this beige sand color and a little bit of the green in there. Mix it up. I'm going to add a little yellow too. And it's all on the same brush. And then we're just going to put some different colors in here. And just lightly pounce. And, um, don't put it all in one area though. Um, trees are in, in different levels and they have different um, sections of, of how their leaves are growing. So remember that. Usually there will be a darker area underneath the sections. Um, and when you get into like this area, this could be bushes. Here, we're doing a garden. So there would be all kinds of different uh, leaves and different shapes of trees and bushes and Maybe a little bit darker in there. And this is just one of the layers. There's going to be lots and lots of layers. So just have fun with it. It may look kind of funny for a while, but... That's the way um, painting goes. You have your ugly stage. <laughs> you just wipe it off with a um, paper towel or a rag, whatever you have. But we're just doing... Now, this area in here, as we go down... It's going to get closer to the gardens area of where the plants are and stuff like on this side. So I can just um, put some of this color in. Mix it up though because there will be different shadows and whatnot. And as you come down here, 
because we're going to end up putting all the flowers on top of this. So just remember not to get too carried away with detail yet. This is just base coating. Same within here. Be a lot of different colors. Just mix it up. Don't be too worried about anything yet. You want lots of, the more color combinations too down here, um, gives it more interest also. Okay. So it kind of looks like a mass right now. Hey, Jilly. That's how you start it. Okay, so there's what, so this here around her in this area is going to be kind of the pathway. So um, I'm going to make mine um, kind of more in the browns into the ochre, maybe a little bit of um burnt orange in there, that type of thing. So let's, here's some burnt orange I've got out here. I'm going to add that somewhere on this spot. And we're going to do the same thing. We want this area where the pathway would be. So I'm going to just dip my brush in there. I'm going to have the path kind of sliding over there a little bit. So I'm just basically uh, making my colors on my paper. Maybe a little bit of white. Now, this is area here isn't going to be um, painted over with much. So we want to pay attention to your, your line work now because it's a path. So you're going to see a little bit more... Um, areas where you want it to represent a foot path. So it might have some um, shadows in certain areas. Maybe there's a little more crevices. Just take a look at what you're doing. You can even um, look at uh, paths in Google garden paths. See what they show. Okay. And we can always um, change things up when we start putting the flowers in too. Okay, now I'm going to uh, give this a dry and we'll take a look, see what else we have to do. Hey, Darlene.
You want to make sure it's uh, pretty dry because if you don't dry it and you try to paint over it, you can actually lift the paint you already put down. All right. So um, I think I'm going to put a few more uh, lighter areas in here of uh, trees. I'm going to take my brush again. I'm going to squeeze all the water out of it. You don't want a wet brush. And we're going to get into a little bit more of a lighter green color. Okay. So, um, Let's put in I got some purple on there too. <laughs> Just turn your um, brush around so you get different prints. You don't want them all the same because you will notice a pattern in them. You don't want that. Get some other colors in there. Change it up a little bit. Um, darker ones up here too. Okay, so we'll dry that. dry brushing basically. Just a little area in here. Okay. You could splatter all kinds of stuff. make um, stones if you wanted to. All right, so now what we want to do is take this and we're going to put in this trellis and her and the easel. So make sure your thing is dry. going to get a white transfer paper.
because we have a fairly dark surface here and I want you guys to be able to see it. So I have some white here. I probably have a piece somewhere, but I have no idea all right now where it would be. <laughs> I'm not going to waste your time searching for it. So I'll just cut me in this piece. here. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Well, that's too bad. Well, you know, she was, what, 98? So she had a really good life. An exceptional life, actually. So she is in a better place now and Yes, exactly, Jilly. She didn't suffer. Okay, so we're just going to tape this down so just in case I miss something, I can pull it back up and not have to worry about um, lining it all up. <laughs> all right. I'm going to put these away so I don't get it my arm in it because that's what I typically do and I want a pen a ballpoint pen I think this one works All right, and I'm going to trace on the trellis, her, and the easel. I'm not too worried about the flowers. We can put those. You can put them in if you want, um, but it's not really needed. Okay, like that, and then her hat. I thought this was a great one for you guys and beginners because you don't have to play with the face. I know a lot of you kind of are a little nervous about drawing faces and whatnot. So I thought this would be <laughs> done a lot of them actually without the face. And all of these uh, marks in here, this I put in just to show you where some of the um, shading areas are on the clothes. So it makes it a little easier for you to paint. Creases and stuff like that. And I put gloves on which makes it easier. You don't have to worry about the fingers. I know hands are a little bit hard to do. This is a 
actual this here is actual um, shadow from the collar of her shirt. That's her chin. creases so I guess um, hmm, will Charles be the king now or Will one of the grandsons be? Um, hey, Colleen. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> this is me. Um, I've got a saying for it, too. <laughs> it's um, art and plants make me happy. Humans make my head hurt. I think I'm going to put it along the top and bottom. Isn't that the truth? There's your paintbrush. Hmm. Lighter areas. These are all the um, dividing the highlights and the shadows on her apron. And then a pot, of course, of flowers. And you can make them whatever. You might want to make it for a specific season. Um, You could have mums for fall and have all the fall background. You could do it for spring. It's a good one for you know, different things. I just made a bunch of squiggles for the leaves and stuff. And then you can put flowers on top however you want. Um, And there is a downloadable for this uh, Colleen for everybody, um, all all members. I guess I should have checked to make sure this is going through. Yep. Good, good, good. Um, and then this. Now I'm going to put a ruler down because I want this straight. Uh, where did I put my little ruler? There it is. It's already printed. <laughs> awesome. You could actually um, do this on top of a garden photograph and just put her on top. There's so many ways of going about this.
and change it up. You know, maybe you want her to wear a different hat. You could put a ball cap on her if you wanted to and have the, the um, take this out, have hair. Um, or maybe you don't want, you could try and draw a face. Okay, and I'm just going to put this in because that's the edge of the garden there. And the same with this, so just so I know where it is. This is where the trees were. Okay. I think I got it all in. Yep. Okay, so there's what it looks like. going to we'll do the arbor first because it's behind her so if we happen to go over top somehow on her we can just re re put the marks down over top later so the arbor it's going to be a white arbor so I'm going to get a smaller flat. It's yeah, like about. And it's going to be um, not white, white, more, more of a, you want it grayed down a little bit or just get a little bit of white and um, buff or a sand color and dirty it up a little bit. You don't want it really bright white. You could add a, a smidgen of gray to it too, if that's what you want to do. Might need a couple coats too, um, depending on your background and your paint. Some paint uh, is a little bit translucent than others, so you just play with it. And these lines uh, will come off. Let's see, I don't see that one. Did I get that? Just seeing, I think I missed a spot. And I'm just putting these in. This is the base layer. We'll go over top of it with greens and flowers and stuff like that. Oh, this is going to show a little bit more if I put some more green behind there. But I will be putting leaves and stuff, so I'll leave it for now and see how it works out. So I'm going to dry that and then probably put another coat on. Now, if you want your trellis to be a different color, that's good too. Make it yours. Same thing will apply. So you want lights and darks, highlights, shadows. OK, 
Okay. All right. Um, I think I'm going to put a little bit of that sand color on the um, easel. Now you can take a piece of tape. Oh, do I have any? I guess I could use this. And put your lines in that way. That way you get a straight line. So use washi tape or let's see. Put oh well, that's gonna hmm. I don't know, it might take off my line, but I can always put it back on. Let's see that one goes down. Like that. Or if you want, you could freehand it. Depends how fussy you are about straight lines. <laughs> Okay, that one. Now, if you're using um, painter's tape, make sure the paint underneath is dry or you will rip it when you go to remove it. And that's not good. All right, let's put some of that. And take it up. Oh, it didn't take it off. Good. I'm just going to put it here for now because I will reuse it. But I have to dry that first. Same thing. A whole lot easier just doing it this way. It takes I guess it would take about the same amount of time, but at least you get a straight line when you're done. Having a very bad day, so we need some sanity. Oh, I'm sorry for that dot. 
Well, hopefully we can cheer you up a bit. There, see nice straight lines. I'm just going to wing this part. And I should do this one here. Let's dry that little bit that I just did. straight line there. And there's just a smidgen of a difference in here. Not much, but a little space in between there. Let's do that. And that goes to there. Okay, and we'll just, we'll do this in a minute, the little canvas on there. Now you could either put the tapes back on and, and um, finish, put another coat on, or you could just use the uh, flat of your brush. Just go up bits of it that aren't um, as opaque. Just take your time. You could also take a Posca if you have the color that you need in your Posca paints, pens. And use a ruler with it. That. Let's go up. I missed that up there a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'll probably take a um, either a paint pen or a colored pencil and put some shading in these so it looks like they're a little more 3D. Let's see that. Hanging out with us for a bit, we like to pretend we are sane. <laughs> All right. Now, 
I'm going to do a little bit more of the um, botany end of it, I guess, the leaves and stuff. But because this is in front of these trees, they're going to be a little more pronounced. So you're going to recognize them a little more as leaves. So uh, depending on, on um, what you want to associate them with, like maybe you, if you want it wisteria, well, you know the wisteria has a bunch of leaves. Uh, so wisteria would be like this. So there'd be more, um, you know, one shape instead of just, you know, random little marks like that. Same with a rose. Um, the roses, because they're so compact, but roses normally are five to three uh, flower or leaves on their stems, but they're a little bit more of a... Uh, almond shape, I guess you could say. Okay, so depending on how much you want to um, have detail is up to you. You don't have to be exact though, like, but just put a few of those in so your eye will catch it. Um, now you want to start off with dark. So I have a dark evergreen here. And I'm just going to put a bunch of these might be roses or they could be um, clematis or it could be just uh, some type of ivy without flowers on it. This is kind of the background, the shadows of it is what we're painting right now. So I want you to come out a little bit because this is a trellis, so the flowers will be, and the leaves will be kind of sprawling over to the back end of that trellis. So you want to put some of that around her hat. Don't worry about um, going over her hat a little bit. That's fine. You can always paint over this, but you want to have that depth. And then uh, in between these, can put a little bit of that in there. I left some sections. where you can just add a little bit in between. Depending on, you know, how do you want it? Did it grow up from this side or the other side? Or is it coming from that side? It's up to you. You don't have to get too um, detailed in it. You could just leave it up to the viewer to um, I'm just going to put a few in here, that, okay, and then what you can do is dry that, can add a little bit of either yellow to that green. So I'm going to kind of scooping up a little bit of that green there and add some white over here. And maybe a little bit of that yellow, change it up a little bit. Just make a nice color. Depending on how um, light you want it. And then just Put some of those mid-tones in now on there. 
here and there. And you probably have a, a few mid-tones from the, the brush mark of your paintbrush. Here, I'll take you guys in a little bit so you can see a little bit more what I'm doing here. So see the little mid-tones from the brush marks? Okay. Now, if the sun's shining, you would have a little bit more of a bright color on the top part. And just a few along the... Um, let's see if I can get any more out of this thing. Just need a bit. So I'm going to add some yellow. This is uh, yellow light. And then I can add some, oh, it needs to be a little bit lighter. I'm going to take white and yellow to that, make it a little lighter. I want it so it shows there. And mostly on the top part, leave some of the uh, darks though. You want um, just a bit. And then just a few that catch the light on the trailing side. Not much though, just a bit. And Okay, so we went over her hat a little bit, but that's fine. We'll paint that over top of this. So now let's put a little bit more, um, more of a gray, I think. So I'm going to take some of this white and just a smidgen of gray on my brush, a little, little bit and make a gray color. Not too dark though. Okay, and then I'm going to wipe it off. And just the tip of it. And I'm just going to go down, dry brush a bit. Just to rough it up a bit. And this underneath the uh, leaves and stuff would have a, a little bit more of the gray color showing on there because it would be shadowed by some of those leaves. Okay. It's very, very delicate. All right. So now you want to get um, some of that umber color and maybe a little bit of let's see let's put a little green in there I want kind of a dirty color and put a little blue There. So it's kind of a dirty color. And now I'm going to do one side of this arbor. So on the right side of it, just going down the edge. Like that. Actually, that doesn't need to be there. And then on the bottom of these crossed 
members. You can put some in. And they kind of um, go into the other side piece a little bit because you're seeing the inside of that. Like this. Okay. And then just a little smidge like that. And this one here is along that same side as the other one. So the right side. And if there's um, leaves or stuff, you can paint in there some of this color. So it would be fairly dark in there from the leaves, and this will be a shadow color. So I'm painting basically underneath those any of those leaves that are under there. Uh, let's see. In there. Okay. And then just a smidgen of highlight right under there. And I just basically dry brushed. And I'm going to just put a little bit up there because it would be kind of um, damaged from the wet of the ground, that type of thing. So it's not going to be um, nice and pristine white. Okay, Julie, have a good day. All right. And then I'm going to take some of that white now. And I'm going to dry brush just a bit on the sides here. Just a smidgen, not the whole thing though. And at the very tops of these, you could put some of that. Um, you don't have to worry about the top part though, because it's covered with plants. So you probably wouldn't see any kind of highlight there. Um, there might be a little bit just in the center here. Not much though. Like that. Hey Devin! Okay, so there's that. Um, okay, so let's put some more plants and stuff. Um, actually, I'm going to take my rag here. And this, all this white here, is from the transfer paper. I'm just going to wipe some of that away. Let's get some burnt umber, 
painting an arbor. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, I got some burnt umber here, and I'm just going to put some tree um, in here. And let's have a couple. So I think. Um, I think I'm going to go this way. Like that. And This maybe just a suggestion of leaves. Yeah, you could get your poscas out and do this too. Let's see. Your paint poscas. So I have a brown here. Welcome, Carly. You go on your community page and you will find the download membership community on my channel, main channel page. And if you scroll down, you'll find all of them. Move this out of the way a little bit so we can uh, you can put as many as you want little bits and pieces like that Okay, and you can also um, put some more in here. Does it, you know? You can always go back over top of these too if you find you don't like how they're looking, and put some more um, brush in or tree limbs or small trees or bushes. There's always a way of fixing it. Okay, and let's see, I think we need doesn't always have to sometimes you see bits of the branch or a little bit of leaves or whatever. Don't just put a big blob on. And then we can also put a few branches and stuff on these. So uh, maybe there was a branch coming down on these things here. Rolling around, you never know. Like that. Could have, yeah, just 
play with it. Uh, um, let's see. I have a fairly dark here. These are kind of umber color. Let's see if I have a darker one here. Let's see. This one is a another type of marker. What are these called? Uh, these are um, Montana markers. I've had these for years. So let's put on one side maybe a little bit of a shadow with this. That wasn't quite dry enough. Remember to it's about the same color, so that's almost a black maybe. Uh, a darker one. Let's see. Really, really dark. Hmm. That's, uh, oh, that's not dark enough. So, this one might be dark. Let's see. I need almost black, actually. I might have to just use black. I think this is going to be too light. Yeah, that's too light. Although I could use that for a highlight. Let's see. Yep. Highlight. Make sure you just put it on one side, though. All right. Now I can take let's see. Maybe. Um, maybe I'll have to use just thinking what I can do for real detail in there. Let's just do finish what we're doing here and the hat and stuff. So that's going to be kind of a off-white goldy color, I guess you could say. So the sand color that I was using is a good one or if you have um, buff color, that would work. And that's going to be um, our mid-tone. That's this color here. So I want you to paint your whole hat area this color. You can put the ribbon in later, so don't try and paint around it. Um, Try to get a fairly good coat on. So you want a base coat in this cream color. And it just goes up like that. Let's dry that. Or we'll leave that and we'll go on to the work our way down. So let's do her 
hair. So I'm going to make her hair fairly dark. So I have the burnt umber. And I'm going to add this charcoal to it to make it fairly dark. Or if you have black, you can um, add a little bit of black to it. Oh, um, you could actually uh, use a marker for this too. I'm just going to put in the main area here so I don't have to color it in and all. Let's get a smaller brush. So around the hat and the neck. And there are some little bits flying out from her hat. Uh, we can also use some um, other colors to make it look a little more um, separated. So don't worry too much about it. She's got just the smallest amount going down her neck, just like that. And then her face is, because it's shaded, it looks kind of orangey. Um, so if you've got a mm, raw sienna, that would work. Uh, let's see. I think I have a raw sienna somewhere. If I can find a color I want. Here's a dark one. Okay. So I have um, shading flesh because it's fairly dark because her hats basically um, shading her whole face and chest area. So if you have shading um, dark in, what is this? Americana. Um, I'll show you a color you can use if you don't have that. And we will um, add a little bit of detail for her chin and stuff. So it'll probably look a little bit weird. Okay, so if you have, let's see, get my paper here, um, ochre color, you can use it ochre, ochre, and some red. And some white. So 
So if you mix your ochre and then just little bits at a time of red. You kind of get a, a peachy color and then add some white to that. So the more white you add, the lighter it would get. Okay. And that'll give you a skin color. Okay. Um, sometimes I like this better than the, the other paint because it's a little more natural looking. This is a little bit too pink. So let's put some of this on. Actually, I want the darker one. Although that was going on top of green, so that green was kind of showing through. Like that. Just have to play with it. Play with your colors. See what you can make up. Now there is a really, really dark area there. And I'm just going to use a little bit of umber. Um, actually, that color we made up with the black or gray that you have for her hair. There's a real dark area under her chin. Right here. It just goes down the side of her collar there a little bit. Just a bit. And then it goes in just a smidgen into her neck. And that's her chin. Okay, so I just went a little bit too far. I'm just going to take this and up like that, actually. Just keep playing with it until you, you get it the way you want. Like that. And then I can put a little bit of a lighter peachy color just right here where her cheek would be. Just a bit. Just to show the difference between her her cheek and her um, neck. Here's where her neck is. It's a little darker. Okay. All right, now let's, um, this is dry now, so we can go back to the hat and put a little bit of highlights and shadows in. And this is when we want to, you can use a, a either a small uh, flat or a round. And we're just going to add a little bit more of that ochre color. Um, to that buff that we used for the um, the base coat. So the sun's coming this way, so there would be a little bit of a shadow on this side of her hat. Now remember, her hat is round, so you want to put your um, brush strokes in a round way. And it, it'll just go up a little bit on the top there. And then that's where her um, 
ribbon will be. And then because her hat is kind of folded down a little bit in the front, it's going to have a, um, the sun's going to have a shadow from the top of her hat shining or shadowing this part of the brim of the hat. So it's going to be a little darker. So you can either add more ochre. And kind of shape it in a V. Shape. Like that. Maybe even a little darker. I want it fairly dark because it would be shadowed. So let's put a little bit of umber with that. And again, I'm just kind of using the strokes to go with the uh, direction of the hat. And this top part, too, right here, would be a little bit of that color also. And it kind of folds over a little bit right here on the side here because it's a, a material hat. It's not a straw hat. So be a little bit flimsy there, like that. Okay, but this right from here over to here is going to be a little bit on the lighter side also. So a little bit of that ochre again with your buff. And I'm just sweeping it in. Just a little bit on the side here. Not all the way up though. Okay. And then under here we can a little bit and a little bit on the side there. Okay. And then we can take some um, white. So some buff with the white and lighten that buff up a little bit. And this is going to be a highlight. So the highlights are going to be right about right by the rim where the top part of the hat is. So right in here and right around there and a little bit in here where the fold is and the back of the hat and a little bit right here going up to the top, just a little bit. And then image in there, and just a bit on the edge. Oop, got too much water on my brush. Just a bit on the edge there. Like that. Oh, thanks, Devin. <laughs> Just takes a little practice and, and take your time. Don't rush it. All right. So let's see. What can we do now? Um, let's see if I have... Another marker, darker. I know I have pastas, other pastas, so. I think I have one dark enough. I don't know if I do. 
Mm, no, it doesn't look like it. So I'm going to take a colored pencil for this part. So I want a really dark, dark brown. The darkest brown you can find in your colored pencil. So dark, oh, dark brown. <laughs> So, and make sure it's good and sharp. And I just want to take some of the hair pieces and just swirl them up. Hopefully this will be. So it kind of looks a little more natural I might have to get black out actually we'll see it has to be fairly dark though for this to work okay and then um, probably a white or a cream, an off-white maybe would work. Let's see, I'm gonna use a fairly fine white, see if this works or not. I might have to, I could always color it if it doesn't. And just where the, you might have areas where you see through the hair, you know what I mean? Um, so it's the gaps that you're looking at in the hair. So you're not going to get much on in here, um, just a little bit, but I might have to color those green. We'll see because the background, it you would be seeing through the background. In the background um, would be green. Let's see. All right. Okay, let's do her shirt. Or actually her um, thing on her hat would be a different color. Let's do it blue. It's a new marker. Maybe we'll do it unless you don't have markers then you're going to have to use a very thin brush, a script liner. If you have markers, paint markers, then use them. Her hat has um, like a bow and then around her hat like that. So 
we'll let that dry and we'll come back and highlight parts of it. All right, so her shirt. So we're going to paint kind of a uh, an off-white color. So you could actually use that buff color, but add some white to it. Let's see. So I'm going to take this white. I'm going to add more white. I just use um, gesso for my white. And then you can um, start filling in your shirt. Now there are quite a bit of shadows and stuff, so we may have to come back and um, re-put those areas in just so that you're able to uh, see how they're done. So fill in all the shirt and we'll just um, use the tracing again. It's just a whole lot easier than trying to um, paint around all those little areas. And you'll get confused, so. I know it doesn't take much for me to get confused and stuff like that. Now her apron is also um, the same color as her shirt. So you could actually just go ahead and paint that area into and we'll just go over now you're going to have to line it up, which um, could be a little tricky, but you may as well learn how to do that because it does happen a lot when you're using um, tracings that you have to reline up things. So how many of you prefer doing people in your in the paintings or do you prefer no people in your paintings? I like people in my paintings, but um, I know a lot of you kind of shy away from doing it. Okay, I'm going to dry this now. You like trying both? I try and make it so oh, actually here. <laughs> Forgot I had this. This is the um, tracing. Now that I got this um, tracing paper off of Amazon, and it's one of the best ones I've seen in a long time. 
coat. Translucent, that is. So if you want, I will put the um, Amazon link in later if you're interested in that. Because this would, this, look, you do it on a um, one of these, it makes life a whole lot easier. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. Oh, I know what I did. Okay, this tracing isn't the same size. This is smaller. Oh, darn. Okay. Where did I put the tracing? I made it smaller. That's right. Oh, that sucks. Because this is bigger. All right. Well, so much for that idea. <laughs> okay. So I got to see. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm looking at, actually, I'm looking at the feet and putting my thumbnail down and seeing if it lines up on that edge. If it doesn't, you know, to put it down a little or over a little bit. Okay, that one's right. And then that one's right. Okay, so it might have to go over a little bit. And then I think that's it. Okay, I got it. So now I can go back over. But it won't work with white. That's right, I did white. So I'm going to leave it on here. So this is how I got it. I'm going to put it down, and I'm going to get another color. Wow, you're really seeing some major, <laughs> major um, fixes here of what to do, which is good. So this is the gray one. So because I know that's all fixed now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this underneath that area. Put it back down. And now I can go back over it. So all right, I put it, there it is. Okay, so I'm just going to go over. the uh, white part of her apron and shirt. Probably be better to, um, actually I should get another. I'm gonna use a black here. I can see where I was. And then I'm going to see if this comes through. So check your marks before you do the whole thing. <laughs> Nothing more maddening is when you get done and you find out that uh, nothing came through. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's hold it. Yep, it's coming through. Okay. Okay, that was her shadow. 
think I do this, but I'm not sure. Uh, I'm more interested in um, the shadow. I don't have to do the outer edge because that's already there. But I want these shadow marks. So you guys at least have some easier way of um, figuring out where all these shadows go. Okay. Actually, I forgot to put this comes down like this. That mark there isn't on the pattern. So if you want to put that in, this is a pocket here on our shirt. Okay, let's see if that all came through. Yep, okay. A MacGyver is right. <laughs> okay, there's the shadows. Um, is this a self portrait if you gardening and painting <laughs> it could be but I don't do a lot of painting outside no I'm not <laughs> I have gray hair and I'd have a bunch of cat or dogs around me probably <laughs> okay now this is going to be more on the gray side for your um, shadows. So we want to take that. You can take the same uh, mixture that you used to cover the apron and just add a little bit of black or gray to it. That. And now you want to, I'm going to use a smaller brush around. So now we want to just add a little bit. Start with the lighter side. So this isn't a really dark, dark, but it's um, a little bit dark. Actually, it could be darker. Make it darker. It's not showing up enough. There. So... There'd be some... Um, areas on our sleeve and right in here that's by your body your shirt and whatnot um and then this thing here is actually a shadow And this part of her shirt sleeve, or her collar here, um, goes up into this here. Like that. I'll just do one side first so we can get all the highlights and, and dark darks in. Okay, so now I want to take some of that white and there's some really bright areas. So where that, right here, that's part of her collar and it's folded over. So it's hitting the sunlight because the sunlight's coming this way. 
so it would be brighter. And then her shoulder would be brighter. I got too much water on my brush. The shoulder part. But don't put it all the way up. Leave a little gap in between this part of her collar. And then on top of these um, dark areas, just put a little bit of white. You could take a, a marker if you want to, if you don't want to use a brush. Across there. Here's her sleeve. I should have done her arms, but I didn't. And that's one of those tabs to hold your sleeves up. Um, this here is a little bit. I should dry it. It's mixing into my gray. down here like that just try to remember where your light source is and then it's a little easier of uh, thinking where to put it so this goes down across And this. Okay, that goes up. Make this a little darker. And then there, it kind of folds over a little bit right there. So it's a little lighter. And then I just follow thin line that. And then this side is a little bit lighter here. And then over here, a bit lighter. Just a smidgen in there, not much. It's more dark because her arm's shading it. And this area actually is um, more dark in here. Okay, let me take um, that gray again that we were using and add a little bit more gray to it, just a bit more.
Don't use it all up though. Um, don't mess up your gray that you used before because you'll be using more of that. So then there's these just little, little dark, dark areas. Um, just here and there. Um, beside her arm and her body that would be darker. And you could use a paint marker for this if you want. It's actually a lot of fun playing with um, fabric, learning how folds are, and kind of study it. It's interesting, and um, the highlights and lowlights. dark area right in there. I need my that right along the edge here. This actually can be a little darker right in there. Just a very thin line coming down. Alright, so we'll let that be for a minute and then we'll do some more of that grayish color in this part. And this is a lot darker. There's her, the other side of her um, collar. So it's quite dark. And adding more gray to this one area. Because right under here, her collar is really dark there. And right in here, right up to her shoulder, is the darkest crease. And then there, there. Uh, and right in here. Some creases that are fairly dark. I'm going to add a little bit of the lighter color, maybe a little bit more white in it. And 
hơn. We'll color in some of this. That's her shirt. So it's not dark, dark, but it is a lot darker than this side. And this is dark. So we could actually color your, this part of her apron where all those lines are on it. Just color in some around those left, the right side of all those. So that's basically the um, the shadow side. Don't worry if you go over some of the lines or you're not exactly where it was. Nobody's going to come and inspect where you painted. <laughs> this is um, probably your first one, so don't be too hard on yourself. It's starting to dry on my palette. Wait. You can make this as simple or intricate as you want. A little bit more of the dark. And then right under here would be darker. I forgot to put that in there. That's okay. You 
creases coming down. That are a little bit darker right in there. Wait. And here is a little bit more white. And a little bit white in this up here where we did this. So just on the edge of her sleeve here, working its way in. And then let's see, on top of here. a bit and a little bit in here like that um, and I gotta clean my brush a little bit more on the white side right in here her hip And, oops, get some, get some more white. Uh, in here. So basically, um, this is the right side, so it would be brighter. And then there's a little, like, areas. bit of that peachy color or not peachy um what do you call it sand color mix in there a little bit there is some um yellowish base and in here and 
and then just some of that lighter grayish color let's see and this kind of folds up like this I'm kind of dry brushing it and then it, the side of her um, apron is a little bit lighter You might have to play with this a little bit. It's not perfect by no means. Um, but I'm not going to get too crazy with it. Um, And just a smidgen of that darker color. Um, a little bit of water on my brush. Right in here. That. Just a bit. You do it. It is a little. If I had time, I would do all the gradation of the folds and stuff. But I don't want to scare you guys away. <laughs> it can get a little confusing. Um, I like doing this type of work, but I know it can be. Uh, A little bit um, intimidating when you're doing this type of work. Okay. Yeah, well, I think I'll leave it at that. And then let's do the jeans. So the jeans are uh, a denim blue. So let's see. I think I got some blue here. Didn't I take it out? Denim blue. Okay, this is thunder blue, it's called. Any darker blue would work. Kind of a grayish blue. We'll see how. Let's see. Add a little bit of gray to it. And then a little bit of white. And we'll, I'm going to um, base coat the whole leg. And again, you can um, 
put your lines back in afterwards. And well, it's Peter, her um, skin. <laughs> so we had ochre, red, and white. So let's make up a little bit more of that. So you end up with kind of an orangey color and you just add some white to that to lighten it. Okay. And let's her arms here. They have, she has gloves on, so gardening gloves. She has, I don't know, you could have her wearing socks if you wanted. I don't wear socks, hardly even in the winter. My feet are so hot. Always been that way. Okay. I have to give it a couple coats, depending. You don't see the arm on this hand because the flower pot's holding it. Um, give her red. Let's see. Let's give her red gloves. Gardening gloves. And then I had her holding a paintbrush. So you gotta put that in yet. Looking at this part, I had a line here. I don't know what that was from. I think it was supposed to be part of her. Yes. 
and we could add buckles to it or whatever you want. These are kind of slip-ons. Okay, now let's dry this and then we can add some highlights and sh shadows. <laughs> So we'll uh, put some highlights on her jeans. So all I'm going to do is add some white to that blue mix that we did for her jeans. off my brush. So there was a, now you could use your paintbrush or um, colored pencils for this, whatever. Yeah. And the other one. No, there won't be as much in the other one because her foot's back a little bit. There will be a little bit. Bottom there, you know. That. And then just kind of dry brush a little bit. Just on that one side. Okay. And I think that has to be propped around. It was curving the wrong way for me. Same with this one. Curve it down a little bit more. Don't know how I got that, but I did. There, that's better. Well, what you're doing. Thanks, Dot. All right, and then her shoes. Well, we can use the burnt umber. So there'd be a shadow right there. 
You could use colored pencils again for this. Um, more detailed stuff. Um, should have more of a shadow on the top of her shoe because this foot's kind of back a bit. And then this one, you would see it a little shadowed in here. And just bring it out a little bit. Put a little bit of this um, umber color with this red, darken it for the shadows of the gloves. So right here, I might have to get the uh, colored pencils. I think this is going to be a little bit more touchy to do because of the um, how small it is. So let's leave that and we'll use colored pencil. Now we do have highlights on that, those shoes, so add a little bit of white to that mixture of brown and like that just a bit you don't have to get too carried away and then maybe a little bit on the opposite here. Let's do this um, flower pot and we'll do it in white and so again a little, not white white but grayed down or blue down. And maybe no we'll do it white. And then we can put a design on it if you want. Like that. All right, then I'm going to take my this thing here again and take some dark green again and just pounce. Some color. 
And remember, these chalk lines can come off with water, so don't be too worried about covering them a lot. Then you can add a little bit of white or yellow. Do it. Get that dry. So let's try that and remove some of these chalk lines. Just get a baby wipe or a wet cloth of some sort and just wipe away those lines that are on your paper. That way you'll know, you'll see maybe some areas that you might need to um, fix because uh, you didn't put in enough uh, paint on some of the areas. Okay, that's good. Okay. Now, this is going to be a longer video. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I didn't know this was, well, I should have known. But it's going to take a little bit longer to do. Okay, so for the, for her gloves, let's see. I'm going to take a colored pencil and this one is Tuscan Red and I'm just going to put in the um, shadowed areas of the gloves. some creases in the gloves too you'll see Lighter color, maybe let's see, even a pink would do. And then you could make some oh that's not gonna work. Let's see. Let's do this one. A little bit of highlight on the fingers.
Yeah. Yeah. And do the same on this one. So this one will be a little bit darker because it's shadowed on the right side. So there's not really a whole lot of um, highlights or anything on that one. That one was an easy one. Um, take your... Nope, that's not going to get it. Uh, let's put a little bit of highlight on and a little low light. So get back this. A little bit darker, just along the edge, both sides, and just up there. And just try and blend it into the other a little bit so you don't have a hardened line. And then a little bit of the lighter one. And that go right in here. Like that. And then take your brush and just lighten around the area like that and the same for the bottom part of the foot so it'd be darker on the inside they're quite dark actually more. Just run another paint here. I don't want to make up any more. Like that. And then just a smidgen of that lighter color. So it would be her ankle. Not much, just a smidge. All right. Okay, so I should do this here. I'm going to just take the white Posca and go down here. This is the canvas that I, she's working on. I have to put the paintbrush in her hand too. Then we can mm. 
It's not working right. I don't know why. Let's get the other one. I guess I'll give her like that and a black tip. big one though. No, nope, that's not going to work. Uh-oh. Now. This is silver. Silver end. Now we gotta, I'm gonna use colored pencils to finish the easel. So let's see. This one is. Nugget. So we would have a dark line. because it's shadowed on the back of these pieces of wood. And I might make these a little bit more mm, textured, I guess, more wood grainy. We'll see. Like this. 
Fim. Yeah, I think I'm just going to make them wood grain with this pencil. They seem too bright. So what I'll do is I'll take a darker color now and go behind. So this will be more or less the green color. So take a darker brown. Just go up the back. This is why I like mixed media. It's so much easier um, when you can use markers, pencils, all kinds of stuff like that to get the effect you want. Okay. And then I guess I could put behind here too. Just to darken that ease that part of the easel. that and need to do this we could make a design on it if you wanted to um, maybe polka dots Let those dry and then we'll um, put a glaze over for shading it. And then a dark gray. And I'm just going to shade some of these um, areas out. Just needs a little bit more shading in here a smidge Just a smidge. OK. 
Okay. Um, and a little bit of white. Just to give um, this a little bit of a different highlight on. Oh, I don't know if it'll go on this page. Yeah. I'm going to have to use a lighter blue. Because... The um, pencil crayon won't go over um, Posca's because the Posca is um, shiny. Only thing about it. So let's see. Can I use this? Oh, it's not bad. So the higher areas. And just a little bit right there. Um, like that. And then a little bit darker for in the front here. I think I'll just use my paintbrush and um, just color that a little bit darker. With a bit of a glaze of this um, the denim color. It's just in here. Like that. Because that was too bright. And then I have a little bit in there. Uh, okay, and a little bit of pencil crayon in here, just to Show that neck a little bit. And then now I can go in with a little bit of more um, colored pencil to put some wisps of hair in if you want. So it'll show up a little bit more. Like that. Okay, so with our plants, let's see. Get my tracing out again. So we had some here, a few there, not a whole lot, but. there and we'll just put a few in you can put in as many as you want that's totally up to you I know this is getting to be a little bit of a long video I wasn't expecting it to go this far so Right in here, I want some uh, fairly light colored ones. So I'm just going to make a lighter. Let's get some more white out here. A little bit more a lighter color. And I'm just going to make some blotches. You can change up color by adding yellow to it or a little more uh, white. 
But I don't have to worry about the background because it was already dark. So as I go out, I might put a little bit more white. Like that. And then some green, a little lighter. That's not going to show. Maybe like that. And I'm going to put some irises in here, I think. So, that. Some more of those blobby ones over here. Want more white. that um, take a smaller brush or you can also take uh, like a fan brush too they make some really cool grasses so this is a fairly light color Let's put a little more white in there that. maybe even just even just grass up there. And then a few of blobs again. Just change up your your colors. You can add um, you know, let's put some blue, purple in there. You don't really need need um a real definite oh that's a whatever when they're far away it's not needed just put in a bunch of green and then a few colors here and there so 
What do you need? Okay, I may need some Black Eyed Susans or something. Let's see. Get some of this. Put a few daisies in here. Here, maybe a few in there. We'll just add some daisies. Just get a little bit of a smaller brush. So I just maybe these are kind of Cornflower. They always have their um, petals drooping. Or echinacea is another name for them. dogs. <laughs> They're hungry. They want their dinner. My son's home, but he just fed them. over here. So maybe a few dots over there. Background. Um, a bit more of that. Gold color. They usually have a really high seed head on them. They're really cool looking. I like them. They last forever. They're very long bloomer. Okay, then I'm going to take that brush, that fuzzy brush, and just stamp a little bit in here. Give it a little bit more color there. And then a liner brush. I'm 
Let's just bring some of these. Oh, those are two. Let's use a. Paint marker. Easier. I don't know if this is going to be too bright, though. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of bright. Too bright. kind of bright too, but I don't know how that's gonna, yeah, I don't like that either. Hmm. Too bright. I need something dull. There's a darker green one. Sorry guys. <laughs> Kim, yes, it has. Thanks. Oh, good. I'm glad we could help. a little better. Let's try it. And just take away any of those marks from the Be careful. If your paint isn't completely dry, it's going to rub off. Let's see, I think that's. Pretty good. All right. And I think I'm just one more thing just to not completely satisfied with the edge here. So I'm just going to. And then we'll call it a day. You're probably going, yes. <laughs> Thank God she's done.
All right. I'm going to make a little bit of a shadow there. So you know me and shadows. Okay, so the right side is the darker side. So we would have a little bit of a shadow in here. So I'm just using a little bit of my gray here. So that it looks right. Okay, I think that's it. I think I'm done. Nope. Went past. There. All right. So I hope you enjoyed. Hope I didn't stress anyone out. <laughs> I, get, I, I tend to get a little carried away with detail, but you can do whatever you want on yours. And I hope you give it a try at least. Do it on paper so um, you're not worried about spoiling a canvas or something. You always should try try it out first on a uh, something that's not too precious. So I'll just put some of these out. For my thumbnail. Thanks. So just try it out. See what you you can change it up in the background. You can do whatever you want. Change the color of her apron. Have her holding something else. It's endless what you can do with these. Don't think you have to stick with what I did. Um, there's always, you know, different ways. I forgot to shade something. See? I'm crazy. <laughs> I think this needs to be shaded. Here. Okay, I'm happy. <laughs> I'll probably fiddle with it, knowing me. Um, okay, so uh, have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you next week on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern. And um, get your books out. Draw, paint something. Have a fantastic day, everybody.